Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Learn Competitive Programming with Codechef. If you desperately want to master competitive programming and get your hands dirty in data structures and algorithms, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Every week, we upload problem explanation from Codechef's contests, conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live interactive sessions. But before we start off, there's a reminder for you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. Great. Now that you have subscribed, let's get started. So the problem that we'll be discussing today is one zero swaps. The difficulty is easy and there are none prerequisites. So let us quickly jump in. So here's the problem guys. So we'll be given two binary strings S and P each of length N and a binary string contains only zero and one. Like these are two binary strings. Fine. Then for each valid I, uh, the ith character is SI. Fine. Simple programming terms. So now we need to convert S into P using zero or more operations of the following type. Now this is a very generic kind of a question where we need to convert one thing to another using the given operation a few number of times and possibly zero as well. Fine. So zero or more operations. And in one operation, you can choose two indices. So I and J, two indices I and J, such that SI is one and SJ is zero. Now note that this was a tricky part as well, that J is greater than I. So basically, you can choose any one, one, and you can choose any one zero. But the another added condition is that one should be on the left of zero. Fine, because I is less than J. So in other words, you can say, and uh, remember to swap them as well. Fine. So in other words, you can say that the operation is to choose a one as well as a zero where the one is on the left of zero and we can swap both of them. Fine. So like one operation could be to take uh, this one here. Like if this is S and this is P, so I can take this one and I can take this zero and I can swap both of them. Fine. So now this one becomes zero and this zero becomes one. Fine. And now you can note that now we have converted S to P by performing this operation here uh, it's only one times fine now we need to determine if it is possible to convert s into p by performing this operation fine and again zero or more number of times as well here it took uh, it took us only one times fine so in case of these two strings the answer for these uh, for these types of strings would be yes because we can convert s to p by performing this operation so this is the problem statement and now let us discuss the approach and how we are going to solve the question so let me just quickly rephrase the question so that it becomes a little clearer to us. Now notice that choosing a zero and, and choosing a one and swapping both of them is nothing but choosing a zero and changing it to one as well as choosing a one and it should be on the left of zero as well and change it to zero. Fine. Because if zero and one are being swapped, so now zero will become one and one will become zero. Fine. So in other words, I can also say that one operation is nothing but to choose a zero and simply change it to one we are just ignore, ignoring the complications of swapping fine so zero becomes one and one becomes zero in one operation where they should also be taken care that the one is on the left of zero fine so now now this is the uh, operation that we have and the idea that we are going to use is that for every zero that needs to be changed fine so in this question we are only talking about those in indices that do not match fine so if there's one uh, let's say the third element of s is one and the third element of p is also one well in that case we don't need to take care of that that's already matched fine so we are only taking uh, the elements that need to be changed that are initially mismatched fine so for every zero that needs to be changed there must be a one on its left that needs to be changed as well fine uh, using the above operation we can say that for every zero we have that needs to be changed to one there must be at least a one a, at least one one on its left that needs to be changed as well so that I could choose that zero and that one in one operation and I could swap them and in other words make that zero one or one zero fine like here to understand it better so if I have this s so the first zero I have is this fine for this I need to convert this as well right so zero should be changed to one so this is a zero that needs to be changed and for this do I have a one on its left yes in fact I have two so I can choose any one so if I take let's say this one and I can swap both of these or in other words make this zero and make this one. Fine. So now I have matched these two characters. Fine. So I can choose this one here and this zero. And then for the second zero, yes, I again have a one on its left. That is this one. Now this becomes zero and this becomes one. Fine. So now notice that we have successfully converted S to P using our two operations and now 0011 and 0011 match. 
Fine. So here in this case, for every zero, we had at least a one on its left. But now notice that for s, let's for this zero, there's a one on its left. Fine. That needs to be changed as well. So I can choose these two elements. This will become zero and this will become one. Fine. And now for this zero, note that this does not need to be changed. Fine. Zero is with zero, so we can move on. So now this zero, this needs to be changed. Fine. But we don't have any one on its left. So we basically don't have any number two. Like the main idea again is that in one operation, we are choosing two elements instead of one. Fine. So even if we are able to find a zero, we should be also be able to find a one with it. Fine. So here, there's no one on its left. Fine. So here, I can say that it is not possible. So this case is not valid, whereas this case is valid. Because for this zero, that needed to be changed. There's basically no one left. Fine. And again, we are not considering this one because this had been converted with a purpose to match it with this. So again, I cannot choose this because then it would become zero. So there was no point choosing this element, right? So here for this zero, there was no one initially in S. So I can say that it is not possible. Fine. So very clear approach, very simple as well, but it makes clear sense, like 100% sense. So now this is the approach that we are going to use. And one more thing that we are going to take here is that initially we can just simply add a check that the number of zeros that need to be changed should also be equal to the number of ones. Only in that case, we'll be able to form a pair. So this was the approach as well as the solution. And now let us quickly move on to the implementation, which will be in Python. But before we begin, do you guys know that CodeShift also conducts free live sessions on Unacademy where we try to teach every possible topic related to competitive programming? We have list of courses for all skill levels, like beginner courses such as Introduction to Programming in C++ and Java, intermediate courses like a course on number theory, recursion, basic data structures, as well as advanced courses like dynamic programming, graph theory, segment trees, and many more. Here, you will be taught by top coding experts who are IUI medalists, ICPC world finalists, and have worked at companies like Google, Flipkart, LinkedIn, and basically all those tech giants. All you have to do is register yourself at Unacademy by clicking this button, start learning here, and choosing your goal as competitive programming. But this isn't just it guys. You can also go for the plus subscription where you get additional benefits like individual support and full-time doubt solving. You also get the access to the problem sets curated by these coding experts for each topic. And to add the icing to the cake, there are mentors who are going to resolve all your queries and they are six star and seven star coders as well. So subscribe to an Academy Plus guys. Don't miss this golden opportunity of learning from the best in the world and kickstart your programming journey today. You can use the code Bharat27 to get an instant 10% discount as well. So hurry up guys, subscribe to an Academy Plus. So now since the code is quite easy as well as the code is like very short in length as well. So instead of just hovering over the code as I usually do, instead this time I'll write the code myself. Fine. So I've just taken that input for test cases as well as the n, the length and s and p to strings. So now the first thing that we need to check is the number of mismatched zeros matching with the number of mismatched ones. Fine. So simply I'm going to define this variable zeros is equal to ones is equal to zero. Fine. So these are the initial number of mismatched. Uh, and this will, uh, we will basically just increment these variables. So then run a loop. So for i in range n, their length, if si does not equal to pi, fine. So if it is mismatched, well, in that case, I'm going to check if it was a zero. So basically a zero that needed to be converted to one. So if this is zero, fine, and remember the string of zero. So well, in that case, I can increment zeros by one. So we have found one mismatch zeros, fine and else so if it was one that needed to be converted to zeros i'll increment once by one right so now i am simply going to check so if zeros is equal to one or in fact zero does not equal to ones so there's no way we can convert it so this is a simple check well in that case i'm simply going to print no and i'm also going to just add this continue statement so what this basically means is that we we'll simply move to the next next test case now what i'm going to do is i'm going to check uh, for every zero like the second condition that we had fine so just initializing initializing this variable c0 fine and this is nothing but zero initially fine and also answer is equal to true so initially we are basically assuming that we can convert and at certain points we are going to make it false uh, when we are unable to find a zero fine instead unable to find a one matching with a zero where one is on the left of zero 
fine so again i'm going to run this loop so for i in range n again well i'm going to check if si is not equal to pi fine when in that case i'm going to check if si is equal to 1 fine or 0 instead so here we must have at least one one fine and let me just change this variable name c1 so it uh, like indicates better what it stands for so here c1 basically denotes the count of ones that we have encountered yet fine so here if c1 is greater than zero fine so we had a basically we had a one so in that case i am simply going to uh, decrement c1 basically we have consumed it for that zero fine and in other cases basically we were we basically ran out of ones so well i am going to print no because there's no way fine and then i'm also going to uh, set like instead of this let me just simply make it answer equal to false fine and here i can also break out of the loop no more iterations required fine so here i can break out and now the simple thing that we need to check is that we are going to print yes if answer basically if answer is still true and else i'm going to print no fine so this was the code and here i've pasted the sample inputs as well so now let us quickly run it fine and here it's showing us yes no no so this is not something that is ideal so we'll have to debug it as well fine so now remember oh yeah so we forgot to increment it else so if the character that we encountered was one well in that case we need to increment c1 by one as well so c1 plus plus oh, sorry c1 plus equal to one fine so now let us run it and hopefully it should work this time so yes we are getting a yes no yes that was expected so now let us quickly paste uh, copy this as well as paste it here and now let us hit the submit button and hope for an easy and remember when the video ends go and try to code it out yourself so that you gain the confidence and if you get an easy don't forget to smash that like button and link down your submission in the comment section so that we can all appreciate your effort so yes we got a correct answer and this was it for this video this basically winds it up